Good morning, everybody. This is Martin John, and we're here to present the Dow of the Day. Dow of the Day is uh, our daily visit to the Dow De Ching. The Dao De Ching is an ancient text written about 600 BCE, and it helps us live a more reasonable life. It helps us realize um, that it is our response to things that allows us to live our lives with freedom. Um, Many people these days, you know, want to talk about, um, you know, freedom. A lot of people want to talk about, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, sovereignty, right? They want to be sovereign. But you don't get sovereignty because you are opposing rules. And I think a lot of people that are kind of attracted to the idea of sovereignty these days are always like, Oh, well, you don't have to pay taxes and you don't have to follow the rules and you don't have to like the reality of sovereignty isn't against anything. Sovereignty is your freedom. And I think that the Tao Te Ching really kind of exposes the idea of what sovereignty really can be. And it's not in opposition to anything. Because if it's in opposition to something, you are already starting from a place that's not just you. You're starting from a place that is under the influence. You're under the influence of whatever systems you are working against. And so when we look at the Tao, when we look at the Tao Te Ching, and we look at this, this, these before the society that we're trying to be sovereign from, right? Not we, but, you know, like I, I, I have seen this. And, and 20 years ago or so, I kind of went down a path like that. And so I understood even then that I was more sovereign than the people that I was expressing that were expressing what sovereignty meant to me. And now it's, you know, like now it's everywhere. We're seeing, we're seeing people want to be sovereign in very specific ways, but they're not sovereign, right? They're actually um, under the influence and, and abiding by many, 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 many rules. And so when we look at ancient texts in, you know, 600 BCE is, ancient. Um, we have to recognize when writing really started. Um, and I don't know how much before the writing of this text did writing exist. I mean, it had to evolve. So it was probably a couple millennia, but it had to exist. And then it had to be in our consciousness long enough to be able to write anything tangible, right? Because like writing, like just like drawing like, and creating um, had to evolve over time. You know, and when I look at the evolution of humans or bipeds or however we want to, you know, because there are lots of different humanoids throughout the, throughout the history of evolution, right? As we look at them, there are many different, you know, we're homo sapiens sapiens, right? So, so like that's our branch. And of course, there are other branches that are linked into that, but it's a long process of evolution. And when we look at evolution and me coming from the arts, I look at the history of art and we see big gaps, right? From Lascaux, uh, the caves to the first portraits that we're seeing on, um, in, uh, I think it was, it might've been Mesopotamia. It might've been, uh, Polynesia. I'm not sure. Um, but a funeral, portraits, portraits of people that would go on their coffins. Like there's a huge gap between those, right? That's some of the, some of the earliest work, but there's, there's millennia in between there. Why is that? And that's because there's evolving, there's evolution. We don't understand things yet. And we're trying to, and, and it's not the purpose of one thing, like the cave paintings versus the purpose of the portraits that were done on the coffins are very different. The purpose of those were different. So we have to be able to take a step back and understand, well, what was the purpose of the existence of these in the long kind of in, in the deep sense of like, well, what is the purpose of this stage of evolution? And writing is going to go right along with that writing anything. And, and it's going to have to, 
there was a purpose that this was written. Now, it should also be said that this was written a lot of, around the same time a lot of scholars say the Old Testament was written. So all of these things were being written on the planet sort of around the same time. I mean, it could give and take a hundred years here and there. And so when that's the case, we're actually looking at something very specific. And, and what's happening here is we're moving from a time where we didn't record things, we didn't write things down, to a time where we did, right? So this is prehistory to history. Now, that doesn't mean prehistory is less advanced. It could be extremely more advanced in some areas, but we just didn't record things. And I would say not recording things is advanced. Why do you need to record things? Because the moment you record them, you lock them in to a very specific idea over a long period of time. And I think that's the that's one of the problems with writing things down at all, is that once it's written down, it doesn't change. Right? It's now written down, and every time you read it, it's the same. So if you read a story, if you read your journal from yesterday every morning, so you read yesterday's journal, and then you journal, and then you read yesterday's journal, and then you journal. You're always being influenced by yesterday. And so your growth isn't here now in this moment. Experiencing this as it is. You're experiencing this as it is, as it relates to how it was in the past. And that's measurement. That's something that before we wrote things down, we didn't really do because, well, if it couldn't be recorded yesterday, then what are we doing today? You know, every day we get up, we trap food, we eat, we gather berries or food or whatever, you know, food, shelter, water, food, shelter, water. That's it. As soon as we start writing things down, we say food, shelter, water, measure from yesterday. Oh, you know, what would make this easier if we made a big, you know, <laughs> if we had a snicker bar. Right. And then it's just like, OK, am I judging today on my actions yesterday, my results yesterday? I think a lot of people don't recognize how much like if you were to eat a Snicker bar, what effect that is going to have on you in the long run, like in the next couple of days, what that's going to how that's going to affect your your stool, how that's going to affect your attention, how that's going to affect your you know ability to be nice, how that's going to affect your pissiness or whatever. All of these things do have an effect on us, but we're so, we're already so under the influence of things and we're already writing things down and measuring, but we might not even be measuring the right things. I'm just going off thinking at this point, um, but this is Tao of the Day. And so let's get back, let's get back on track here. Uh, the Tao of the Day is a place where I like to read the Tao Te Ching. I invite you to come up and uh, pick a number between 1 and 81, and we'll read a chapter of the Tao. Oh, my buddy Julie. Right, come up and chat a little bit about the Tao. She's going to get to pick a number. I don't think she's picked a number. Like We've, we've talked about numbers. Hey, sweetie. I love numbers. I love picking. And you know what? Yesterday has gone now. So it doesn't matter that I came up here yesterday. I'm here today. And I'm here That's to right. <laughs> and, and, it, and it's always, it's fresh. always poignant. It's always fresh, as it should be, right? It shouldn't, like, like, although I do like the idea of, like, sitting with a number and holding it, I mm. don't like holding it for too long. I like to, I like the idea of, like, all right, well, let's just see what happens. I think the thing about being able to see fresh is is a wonderful thing. Yeah. Because if you are holding on to that number, you're only going to see what's around it and what it means, and that's going to then influence um, whatever you choose next, isn't it? Right. But sometimes yeah. when you come up with a number like 74 and it just comes firing out of your mouth, that's the number to go for. I'm going to go for number 74. 74. Don't cut yourself. I'll try not to. <laughs> that's, that's the title. <laughs> I like this one. And I think I even kind of talked about this recently, this, this, this first line. People are not naturally afraid to die. It is what we are born to do. Fear of death is important if you want to rule over people. 
However, you must artificially instill this fear in their hearts. To accomplish this, you kill as an example to control the masses. Since the beginning of time, there has been one executioner. Trying to take its place will lead to nothing good. As a novice with a master carpenter's tools, you're going to cut yourself. Mm. You know, this one talks to me a lot about interfering. Yeah. You know, al- although it it goes to the most extreme in death, right? It says, like, there's only one executioner. But... You know, I, I, I like the word execute because you can execute a thing, like a walk. Yeah. You can execute an afternoon with friends, which means you just you just are, are doing it. Yeah. Right. Executing um, a task. Right. You're executing a task. It's not it, it, it's interesting how and I don't know how it connects. Like it's, I mean, I guess it's like crossing it off the list. Like, you know, you execute executive. a person, you execute a, a Ex- task. Executive. That's quite a, a poignant word then, really. What's that? Executive. Yeah. That's someone who is <laughs> a part of doing the task, I suppose. Right. Yeah. They, they, they're, they're. They're the ones that execute certain things. Mm -hmm. And then there's the executioner. And if those things do actually have the same root, because I don't know the etymology of the two words, they may be coming from different branches, but they sound like they come from the same. Yeah. So... So, yeah, so that, 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 that just brings to mind this idea of like, okay, no matter what your task is, you're not naturally afraid to die, but that's the most extreme of anything. So mm-hmm. why would you be afraid of anything else? Like, why would I be afraid of being like we were talking yesterday on your channel? Like, why would I be afraid of expressing myself to somebody? Mm. It's, it's what we're born to do, fear of death or fear of Whatever it is I'm holding on to is important if we want to rule over people. And, but it has to be artificially instilled in their heart. So when I think about my experience and what I went through yesterday when I was a little pissy and I couldn't express myself to people because, like, I'm not being honest, whatever it was. Yeah. Is there something that was artificially instilled in my heart? And the, you know, like, and, and that makes me think about to accomplish this, you kill as an example to control the masses. So what did I experience? So it forces me to ask the question, what, what is it that I experienced that caused me to be afraid of this sort of death? this death of a relationship, this death of friendship, this death of respect, whatever it was I was afraid of. Yeah. What did you feel when someone was pissy to you? Maybe. <laughs> and and it may very well be that there are people that didn't want me to be honest with them. Yeah. And so they killed a part of me as an example, or they didn't want someone to be honest with them. And this is probably the case. I I could probably point at, I mean, if I thought about it hard, probably point at, you know, when I was a child and I pointed things out to my parents that showed them they were wrong or fallible or fallible. And Hmm. I would be punished for doing that. Yeah. That's, that's, um, yeah, that's absolutely spot on the money because right, you went mute, maybe on accident, maybe you got a call, but yes, that is, you know, 
that's sort of what this is talking about. This, this, this verse is talking about, hey, in order for you to be controlled, in order for you to control people, which is fear of death is important if you want to rule over people. Go ahead. Sorry, Go ahead. sorry about that. Uh, no, no, no. There's uh, somebody ringing me up for some unbeknownst to the reason. I gave them a small amount of time. And then I executed the hang up button. <laughs> <laughs> because that was enough. That's as much as I wanted to play. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I think that um, respect is the thing that they ask for. And then when you are for, uh, pointing out fallibilities, it's denting the respect. And therefore you get told, don't be honest like that. That gets killed in you because it would rob them of their life force or it would it would put death it challenges death. it challenges yeah. their um authority their authority right yeah and and this is exactly what this is talking about like people are not naturally afraid to die it is what they are born to do period that's a fact yeah, yeah. now fear of death is important if you want to rule over people, if you want to have some authority over people, you got to make sure that they're afraid of death. Now, death can be a broad spectrum of things. They're yeah. afraid of something. They're afraid of being left behind. They're afraid of being kicked out of the group. They're afraid of you leaving them. However, yeah. you must artificially instill this fear. And it's still any fear, really. Definitely it doesn't even experience. have to say this fear. It can, you have to artificially instill fear in their hearts to accomplish yeah, what, this what if? kill. Huh. What was that? <laughs> the what ifs. What right. if I couldn't do that anymore? What if you didn't speak to me anymore? What if I couldn't go there anymore? What if... And right. that's all fear. That's right. What if? Yeah. To accomplish this, you kill as an example to control the masses. So when somebody challenges you, you, sh you, you, you push that challenge back down into the ground and, and you do it in front of other people, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody in the classroom, all of your siblings see that you will not Put up tolerate being challenged. Here's my boundaries. Right. Yeah. You are not going to challenge me. And... Yeah. And I am going to instill a fear within you that if you do challenge me, you there will be consequences. Yeah. Now, this finishes. Like, since the beginning of time, there has been one executioner. Trying to take its place will lead to nothing good. As a novice with the Master Carpenter's Tools, you're going to cut yourself. This is every parent who has... In, in the broad terms, killed as an example, you know, oh, is, yeah. is, you know, done something as an example for others to learn that they won't take this. Made like, an example of. Right. When they've made an example of somebody, like what ends up happening is that that, that kid or other kids then rebel. And that's where, that's where, you know, like, the rebellion of the teenagers come in and that's where, you know, people like start doing Check what they up. want and, and not taking your power seriously, not taking your authority, authority seriously. Yeah. I never want to do Martin John. I've actually experienced that. I, I get bet. to say, okay, then that's fine. You are no longer wanting parenting. I'm, res I'm resolving myself from that role. Yeah. And I'm coming back to me. Yeah, it's it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because all the time you are you and yet oh, you just dropped down. Um come back up. Yeah, well we'll finish talking about the seventy four. Yeah, so, all the time you're you. Yeah, all Come the on. time you're you, and yet you take on these roles where you have to do this kill thing to preserve your your authority in whatever role that you're playing. Yeah. And eventually, as you say, the rebellion happens and the questions come, and then you 
you realise that you can't rule like that anymore. That kills doesn't mean anything anymore. Yeah. And then you come back to you. You resolve yourself of that role because now that role is dead. That role's died. That's okay, though, because it was always going to. Of course. And you come back to self. Yeah, and, and the reason, you know, that we want to hold on to that role or the reason that we want that authority is is because, one, we think that's – there's an expectation that that's what we're going to get because that's what we gave our parents. Yeah. And it's like that's, that's – that that was that slowly evolved into what it is. There was a time where it's like having a kid wasn't a big deal. Yeah. You had a kid, you leaned it up against the tree, you went you went about your business. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. You, you strapped it around your back food. and like that was it. Yeah. Like you just it's like, all right, well, there's another one. And and that's <laughs> Pick okay. Pick that one up, will you, little Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> Love that. But yeah, that's right. And then suddenly this time where children became precious. Yeah. It became, um, uh, a, they had an ability then to speak. Yeah. An ability to stand up and say, I do not like this or I like this. I can measure this. Right. Yeah. It's quite interesting, isn't it, really, when you think about it? Yeah, it's it, it, all of these things have slowly evolved, you know, like, and we've evolved outside of our actual instincts, I think, um, mm. so that we can fit into the society that we created. And it's like, all we've done along the way is like, we're going to make things easy. And in order to make things easy, we need rules that those easy things can maintain. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's all it's all so backwards, because like, for you and Brad, like living just sort of a, a little bit more nomadic these days, a little bit more sort of ungrounded and all of that, like Fluffy. there is, what's that? Fluffy. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a, is that the dog? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there, it's living fluffy. It's just yeah. fluffy in the air. It's, it's almost like somebody has thrown the game. Uh, board up in the air yeah and it's okay because i'm getting a really good aerial view of it all it's quite nice kind of experience to have not but the thing everyone. is no well i i don't know i think i think that if everyone was put into a position to have to live like that i think they would find balance yeah you know, I, I, I think that we have been measuring for so long and we have been instilling fear into so many hearts mm. that even the idea of moving into a direction of being more in tune with nature or being more nomadic or not having or not not being so, you know, consumer based or commercial commercially viable or whatever like if we looked at ourselves as animals rather than looking at us as something better than animals right yeah. like like we would we would eventually over time be be okay and we would be able to live in relation to things but the fact that we want to measure the fact that we want things to be easier the fact that we like Someone said to me the other day, like, about working on my house. She was like, oh, yeah, you, you DIY, right? Like, you don't, you don't hire contractors. And I was just like, I mean, I wouldn't call it DIY. I mean, it's like, I cook myself. Just because restaurants exist doesn't mean that my cooking is DIY. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, sure, it is. But, like... No, it's like, like your perspective of the world, meaning someone else has to cook for you. Someone like I clean my own place just because yeah. maids exist doesn't mean cleaning my place is a DIY um, 
is is, is some is some DIY approach. But I'm just it's cleaning doing my house. Yourself so bad. What's that? Is do it yourself so bad? Well, no, no, no. Like DIY, in my mind at least, is a way of looking at something where it's like, this isn't something you do yourself. Uh, To to call it DIY means like... Normally. Normally, like, right. Like, like (laughs) if, if somebody were to... I, I mean, I don't know what would be DIY. I remember one time I got a big slash on my hand and I got a couple, um, got a couple butterfly bandages, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I, and I, and I just, you know, stitched, yeah, stitch it back up with those. Yeah. And then someone looked at me and says, you cut yourself and you DIY'd it. And I was like, no, I just put a band aid on. <laughs> what is this DIY? Why, why, why would taking care of yourself? Why would cleaning your house? Why would cooking? Why would fixing? Why would, why would fixing your house? Why would doing anything be considered? And and this is because I'm Gen X, and and DIY was something that we did that that was in protest almost. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You yeah. know, DIY is protest. Like when you put it in that sense, when you, when you call it DIY, it's like, you know, like I'm going to, I'm going to DIY my own politics or I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do something in protest because I don't appreciate the way that it's being presented. Yeah. I don't oh, know. Thank you. That's amazing. I um, I really love coming up and chatting to you. We go a long way with it, don't we? We do, yeah. A very long way. Can you just read through 74 again for Martin John? Thank you so much. People are not naturally afraid to die. It is what we are born to do. Fear of death is important if you want to rule over people. However, you must artificially instill this fear into their hearts. To accomplish this, you kill as an example to control the masses. Since the beginning of time, there has been one executioner. Trying to take its place will lead to nothing good. As a novice with a master carpenter's tools, you're going to cut yourself. Mm. I like it very much. Thank you so much, Martin John. Absolutely. I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, we'll be in touch. Take care. Bye. Ciao. You know, I want to look at this number 74 a little bit longer, especially as I look at, you know, how I was talking about DIY earlier. You know, it's interesting as the world sort of, it becomes easier to do things. You know, you don't have to learn as much today, I suppose. You don't have to know as much because we have AI, because we have we have shortcuts to so many things, right? If you wanted to start your own business, you'd be able to do that, you know, with like one workshop and a, and a, and a weekend, you know, you'd be able to have a business up and running on the internet, selling a product, like whatever, whatever you want. It's all very, very easy. Um, you know, DIY as, as I know it, as I understand it, I guess, I guess people could be utilizing that term differently today but the way i understand it is that it is in protest and it's in protest to um engaging in the world of commerce or or like you know like people that change their own oil there's nothing like that's what you should be doing but we call it diy we have a word for it because we have almost missed the idea that it can be done on your own. You know, I've been cutting my own hair since I was like 16. And um, so it's not DIY to me. You know, there's like, like, again, the phrase DIY definitely means something to me, but how that relates to 74 in my mind, at least is 
society gets afraid to do things on their own. Like I'm like someone might be afraid that if they get a bad haircut, they'll be made fun of and da, 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 right? Like, and it will, and it will ruin their, their stance in society. People will make fun of them. They won't get what they're wanting to do, right? That's the fear that's been instilled in you. There is a fear that the first world has instilled in its people, which is you have to have things done professionally. You have to have a certain kind of house. You have to have a certain kind of car. You have to have a certain kind of life. You have to have, you know, all of these things. And that's the fear that they're instilling in us so that we go and engage with the market. You know, I don't want to say professionals because I've worked with plumbers that aren't as good, that are licensed and bonded, that are not as good as me. And either either they're not as good as me or they are taking shortcuts or they are purposely doing things wrong so that I would have to call them again. I don't know what those are. I'm not going to blame anybody for doing those things. However, I know when I do something, it's going to get done right. And if it's going to get done wrong, I'll take the, or if it will happen to be wrong along the way, I will take the hit for that. I, I did it. I know how to do it again. I know how to do it better. Um, so a fear gets instilled with us that we have to have things a certain way. And then as we respond to that fear, we, um, As we respond to that fear, well, we there there are authorities. We are we are giving authorities that are instilling that fear more increased amounts of power over us, and that's a difficult thing, right? It's difficult to live our lives and give everybody else the power over us. It will turn around, and I think it's turning around all the time. And I think things are changing, and people are realizing that they don't want to live in fear anymore. And as that happens, there is going to be a lot of fear by the people in charge, by the people who have held authority, because they're going to be like, wait, I'm going to lose authority. I don't want to lose authority. Just like Julie and I were talking when like parents yell at you because you call them out or you tell, tell them that they're, they're doing something incorrect or you're telling them that they're not as good as they think they are. Or they're not, they don't have the power that they think they have. Um, so. Yeah, uh, we're going to bring on Hanan. I think it's Hanan. Is that how I pronounce it? Hanan, how are you? Hello? Hanan? Hanan is now muted. Um, maybe they got a call. Uh, maybe it was an accident. If it was an accident, just let me know. We can get you out. Or you could pick a number between 1 and 81. Um, the whole uh, point of Dow of the day is that we share uh, different ideas around the Dow Day Ching. So today, Julie came up and we picked 74. We read through that. I'll go ahead and read that again. And if you have anything to say, you can come up and say it. Otherwise, um, I, will, I can remove you from the... Um, from the platform, from the stage, what have you. So number 74 is entitled, Don't Cut Yourself. People are not naturally afraid to die. It is what we are born to do. Fear of death is important if you want to rule over the people. However, you must artificially instill this fear into their hearts. To accomplish this, you kill as an example to control the masses. Since the beginning of time, there has been one executioner. Trying to take its place will lead to nothing good. As a novice with a master carpenter's tools, you're going to cut yourself. You know, in when we talk about Tao, you know, there's always balance happening. There's always balance happening. There's um, what we have to recognize when we talk about Tao is that even though you can't see the balance taking place right now, it is going to happen. This is what, you know, there's so many cultures talk about karma, other things like that. Like 
there's balance happening. Now, it might take millennia for a, a, a single shift, right? It might take thousands of years for a single shift to happen. Uh, we're going to bring up Xena now. But always there is balance. And it's always... Hello, good morning. Good morning, Zena. How are you? I'm good. Um, I wanted to talk about what you were just uh, speaking on in reference to fear. Um, something you said is, uh, you know, nowadays a lot of people are uh, sort of like saying screw fear and it's, you know, it's uh, pissing off those in what people would say with power. Uh, the fact that, and it really made me think about how we're taught in America to go to school, to get good grades, to get a good job, which there's nothing wrong with getting an education. However, a lot of people are now realizing that that is keeping them trapped in a cycle of work, pay bills, don't have much left. And the fact that a lot of people are now coming out and saying, you know what, I'm afraid to start my own business, but if others have done it, so can I. And it's breaking that stigma. A lot of people in corporate America are not happy with that. And it just made me think about that. Yeah, um, that is, you know, like, like as it says in this number 74, are you familiar with the, 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 the uh, <clears throat> are you familiar with the Tao of the day? No. No. Okay. So that's what this show is. Um, and what we do is we uh, look at the Tao Te Ching. Are you familiar with the Tao Te Ching? Yes. Okay. So we look at the Tao Te Ching. We pick a number. And today's number that uh, someone came up and picked, and you're free to pick a number as well, uh, was 74, which is don't cut yourself. And that is all around. Um, did you, I don't know if you heard me read it. Yeah, I was I was here with Julie. Oh, I've been here for a oh, while listening. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we are. What 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 I do is I, I ask people to pick a number, and we're still looking at seventy four. So um, and what you're talking about is definitely aligned with this seventy four. So when you're born, you're not naturally afraid to die. However. In school, like I talk about living under the influence. So I have uh, 23 years clean and sober. And a big aspect of what I talk about is comes from like the recovery thing. And, and some things that I talk about is living under the influence. So we live under the influence of the education system. We live under the influence of the cultural sort of um, consumer world that we are we are living in. We live under the influence of our parents and our parents lived under the influence of that. So it's not as if it's their fault, right? That they told us to get good grades. They, they really, they were under the influence as well. And here we as individuals don't want to continue to carry that mantle of having other people live under our influence. Mm. You know, we want them to be who they are. Because maybe they are people who love education and want to get a job and, and do the thing that they want to do. Now, there are people who, um, because that was what the people in authority wanted, there are people who are aligned with that. However, there are probably, I, I, I look at 12%. I would say 12% of the people are aligned with that way of thinking. However, because the people in authority wanted everybody to live that way. They, they, they instilled fear into our hearts by telling us, if you don't have good grades, you're going to fail. Yes. If you don't, if you don't go to college, you're not going to get a good job. And then what did they do? They used the price of college against us because we had to go to school. So the price of college went skyrocketing and who said no, nobody. I mean, I did personally, but, um, but I'm also behind the eight ball because I don't have a degree that everybody my age has, right? Like, so, so it's like, but, but they can't do anything with their degree anyway. So it's like, it's this constant cycle. And no matter where you are, you're always going to look at it as like, oh, I either did something wrong. Why? Because it's all tied up in fear. And it's not until you really love yourself and recognize that there's nothing in this world that you need to be afraid of. 
that you can actually like do anything with yourself, you know, like, like it's all, it's always, it's always under the influence until we can, until we can get out from under that. I absolutely agree. Um, first of all, congratulations on your recovery. Um, you. I too am someone this year made a decade and it's, congratulations. Thank you so much. The fact that you, you said, um, which, which is not a perspective that most would look at, you said we're always under the influence. And although I am someone that it's been, I believe you said 23 years, mm -hmm. I still look at it as how pretty much life influences us and how we're always under the influence. Right. However, you made a positive of that, which is it, it really kind of puts the insight on everything we're talking about, which is you know, fear, fear is instilled in us from, from childhood. It's, it's generational. It's, it's taught children soak everything up. Children are like sponges. So if I grew up in a Hispanic household where you would get your butt whooped, if you disrespected, so on and so forth. And all that did was teach me when I got older, how to be more slick, how to sneak out more, right. how to, you know, it really didn't do anything uh, for my sake, besides learn how to do stuff behind your back, but it was supposed to instill that fear of respect your parents. Um, I, I completely, I completely agree. I think it's, it really depends on what you decide to do with the fear that's been instilled in you and how to navigate around it or through it to be able to say, this is who I am. This is what I believe. This is what I see. This is what I'm going to make happen. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you said one through 81. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. To pick a number? Correct. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I'm going to say 52. Okay. Let's move over to 52 here. <clears throat> this one is entitled like Dow. So to you, all things issue from Tao. It is their mother. Then in their own time, they return to Tao. Like Tao, so to you act in the world of manifestation. When you recognize you are the mother of your experience, you can identify the children your actions birth. Loving them as your children, you are free from sorrow. Choose to not recognize your motherhood, a victim filled with desire and judgment. There will be no end to your turmoil. Look into the darkness and, lean, and learn how to yield. Not allowing your senses to guide you, you will find peace in every crevice. Wow. <laughs> Uh, you, you had a lot of great points. I, I'm going to say the way that I interpreted that for my own life mm -hmm. is as follows. Being accountable for the actions that we take will lead to what, what, let me rephrase that. Anything that we do has a reaction. Every action has a reaction. And when we are accountable for the actions that we take, whether they're mistakes, whether they're something good that, that we would see as something to be proud of, if we're not accountable and aware that we're the ones that took those steps, we're the ones that went in that manner, we won't. I feel like we won't grow from that. And, and I, I, what I took from that was for everything that I've done in my life, whether it was a mistake, whether it was a, something that I would be proud of, I made that choice and I have to be the one to see what that choice produced. And right. And lead it from there. So yeah, because go on. Go ahead. Uh, so like, like I told you, um, I've been in recovery for 10 years and I was someone that my life at that time was so negative and I was going through so much that I ran to the Band-Aid. I, I call the drugs the Band-Aid. Mm -hmm. And that Band-Aid was a choice that I made. It's no one else's fault. My situation was what it was. But at the end of the day, I'm the one that went to that 
And my life was a certain way because of that. However, I also am the one that said, I don't want another chapter in my life because of this decision I made. I need to do something else. And now my life is different. So that flourishes from that motherly um, tell, like you said, leading into who I am now, leading into what my next steps are or, or family. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. What's, what's really, you know, what's really kind of like the, the lines that like you're, that it seem like is being focused on are choose to not recognize your motherhood. And we all do that. That's like not recognize how we have birthed our experience, like from a thought to an action, like we're responsible for this moment. We're not like, it's not our fault, but we're responsible for it. We're responsible for it in more ways than one very often. Um, but if we choose to not recognize our motherhood, like when we were out there, right, Mm -hmm. we're a victim filled with desire and judgment. We have desires and we have judgment of everybody around us because we're not taking the responsibility of where we've brought ourselves. Zena, come back up. I, um, my, my timer's a little wonky. Um, I would love to just wrap this up with you. And, uh, if you have a moment, um, to do that. I know my, on, on your end, it's going to say 15 minutes, but on mine, it only comes in like at 11 or something like that. So it's funky, but yeah, that, I, I loved how you, how you expressed <clears throat> what, what it was uh, that, that resonated with you. So. Thank you so much. I, I definitely, this is about the third time I've listened in on your show. Um, oh, I'm sneaking on while at work. I'm sneaking on while at work, but I work from home. But I, I definitely just love how everything kind of aligned with what I listened into today in reference to number 74 with the fear uh, being instilled in us um, to the the motherly aspect um, and how our actions lead to the next steps, which we have a choice at that point to either live in that choice we made or make a difference and change. And I believe that we can only change anything in our life based off of the choice we make to want to change. Yeah, so. or or the choice we make to not want to change. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But either, either way, the choice we make, no matter what it is, is going to, um, is going to birth something. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that's all I I had to say. Um, I really appreciate you coming up. Thank you so much for for connecting. I greatly appreciate it. Can you kick me out? I don't know how to do that. Yeah, I'll kick you out. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and kick you out right now. Thank you for coming up. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. So yeah, so we, we looked at, you know, what was interesting, you know, at, at looking at these two together. Um, we have, we had 74, which is, there's only one executioner, right? Um, <clears throat> and then we came back to this, 52, which is you are the mother of your experience, right? You birthed this experience. Um, and it's coming from two different aspects, right? Like we have all been, it, 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 fear has been instilled in us. But because we accepted that fear, we birthed experiences in our lives. So what 74 was saying was it was taking a broad view of this is what you have to do to control people. It wasn't saying anything about those of us that have fear instilled with us. It said, this is how you control people. We don't want to go out in the world and replicate that. We don't, and and what that verse gives us is it gives us insight into how we have been controlled. And then we come back to this and we see that we're the mother of our experience. And if we choose to not recognize our motherhood, we become a victim filled with desire and judgment. How many of us are living our lives as victims? Oh, society did this. 
right? You taught me how to not love. You taught me how to hate people. You taught me how, you know, like you taught me how to instill fear. Okay, sure. You, you, you've learned how to instill fear in others. Is that what you want to do? Because if that's what you do, that action will inspire the birth of something else in your life. So there's something interesting about these two together, and especially the way Zeno was kind of bringing it all together and, and how one led to the other, right? Yes, there is this, there is this fear that we are uh, being asked to pick up the mantle of this fear. And then we need to recognize that all things issue from Tao. It is their mother. Then in their own time, they return to Tao. Like Tao, so too you act on the world as manifestation. So all things that you are going to experience issue from you. They come from you. You are their mother. If you have perceptions in your mind, you are going to view everything from that singular perspective. Then in their own time, they will return to Tao. It will come and bite you in the end. If that's what it's going to do, it's going to return to you. You make a judgment, it's going to return to you. You hurt somebody, it's going to return to you. Like that's just karma. Like Tao, so to you act in the world of manifestation. When you recognize you are the mother of your experience, you can identify the children, your actions birth. You can look at this, at this child that you're experiencing today and go back to when did, when did I start the relationship that built this child? You can identify the children, the actions, you can identify the children, your actions, birth, loving them as your children, you are free from sorrow. That means no matter what is coming your way, whether your car is breaking down, whether your relationship's breaking up, whether whatever, this is your child. Can you love this child? Because it's your child. Can you love this child, no matter what it is? And recognize that this is coming from something that you did. This is yours. This is your child. Choose to not recognize your motherhood. You become a victim, right? It's like, oh, this always happens to me. Like, I wish this wouldn't happen to me. And this is bad. And that there's your desire. There's your judgment. There's your victimization. And there will be no end to your turmoil. Why? Because you can be a victim to anything. Be a victim to the weather. Be a victim to your neighbor. Be a victim to everything and anything. Look into the darkness and learn how to yield. The darkness is, is the murkiness of not knowing, of understanding that like, yes, this might have been birthed from an action I took 20 years ago. Like for me, here I am 23 and a half years after the moment that I decided that I was going to stop drinking and using. This, everything that happens today is partially, at least, a child of that choice. But I mean, 23 years ago, there are decisions that you made 23 years ago that may not have been as big as, you know, the decision for me to stop being, you know, to stop using and to stop drinking. But those decisions that you made 23 years ago are showing up in your life today as well and creating children, which are your experiences. That's the darkness. Look into the darkness and learn how to yield to everything that is. Don't try and have the answer to everything. Not allowing your senses to guide you, you will find peace in every crevice. Your senses are, I don't like that this is happening. I, I, I feel uncomfortable, all of this. It's just like, don't allow your senses to guide you because your senses are going to deceive you. You're the mother of your experience. Your senses want you to be the victim. Your senses want you to be filled with desire and judgment because that's what you've been filled with because other people have tried to take the executioner's place. Remember that was 74. Right? You've lived in a life where other people have been trying to instill fear with you, within you. And that fear is part of your senses. 
So this is a really nice pairing today, the 74 and 52. So Zena, thank you so much for bringing up the 52. Julie, thank you for sharing 74 with me. Love you guys so much. Um, I'm Martin John. This is the Tao Te Ching. If you're interested in picking up a copy of my my translation of the Tao Te Ching, which is what I read here on uh, Tao of the Day, you can do so through my website, martinjohn.com. You can find that in my profile. Thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, keep recovering yourself.